Hey kids, welcome to Bill's service. I am so excited. You want to know why I'm excited? We have Bible lessons, Bible story, and worship. So you better get ready. Let's go. Good morning, kids. It's so good to be with you today. Today, we are learning all about the power of the tongue. That's right, the tongue, this guy right there, the one that's in your mouth. We're learning about that today in our series for the month of May on Lessons from James. And for week three, which is this week, we are gonna be learning a lesson from chapter three in the book of James. A lesson all about the power of the... the tongue, that's right. Okay, that little guy in our mouth has a whole lot of power and can do a whole lot of good and sometimes a whole lot of bad. We're gonna learn all about that today. First of all, though, I wanna show you something. Does anybody know what this is? It's not a belt. It's not part of my outfit that fell off. This is actually called a bridle. It's something that goes over a horse's head, and the part of it that I wanna talk about today is this part right here. This metal piece that goes in the horse's mouth. That is called a bit. B-I-T, a bit. Now, there's a verse in James chapter three that goes just like this. It's actually verses three through five. It says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships, for example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Yeah, this bit, if we put this in a horse's mouth and we attach reins to these two rings over here, if we're riding on the back of that horse, it could be a thousand pounds, that horse. And that's how big horses are. They're like a thousand pounds or more sometimes. You can sit on that horse and pull the rein to the left or the right and or pull it back and make that horse stop. You can make that horse do whatever you want just by having this little bit inside of his mouth. So um, they also gave the example of a rudder, right? In the Bible, in, in James chapter three. A ship, some of those big giant cruise ships, right? Like Carnival Cruise or something like that. They have just this one flap in the back that if the pilot turns it left or right, it'll turn that whole giant ship. Even though it's small, even though this bit is small, we can turn the whole animal. So we have to be very careful because the Bible likens our tongue to this bit and to that rudder. Our tongue, although it's very small, it has a lot of power. And as you can probably imagine what we're gonna talk about, it has the power to be good, and it has the power to bring bad. And we want to make good choices about how we use our tongue. Let's talk about a couple of examples from the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. We have a choice. Can we be wise and show our wisdom and be follow the Lord and do the right thing with our tongue by speaking soft, kind words? Or can we choose, you know, we could choose to speak harsh words with our tongue. And the Bible calls that folly. It calls us fools when we choose to do things like that. Our tongue is very powerful. It's small, but it's very powerful. Here's another verse. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I can choose every day, every moment of the day, whether to speak words of life or to speak words of death, to speak kind words, encouraging words, or to speak words that are tear, tear people down and split people apart. I can make those choices, they're my choices to make because the tongue, it's my tongue. I choose to do what to do with it. How about this one? This is crazy. Proverbs 26, 18 to 19. Like a maniac, 
shooting flaming our arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says, I was only joking. Ouch, have you ever done that? Said something that really wasn't very nice or maybe something deceptive or lying and then said, oh no, I was just joking. The Bible says that kind of person is like a maniac shooting flaming arrows. Well, I don't want to do that, I'll burn everything up. So we have to be very careful. I'm gonna give you one more verse. And this one is also in Proverbs. It's chapter 16, verse 24. It says, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Have you ever tried honey right out of a honeycomb where the bees make the honey? I have. It's unbelievable. It's better than anything you can buy in a jar or in a bottle at the shop, right? It's so sweet. It's so refreshing to your soul when you eat it. That is what good words are. That's what words that are pleasant are like. They're refreshing to the soul. I think I wanna make a choice to speak good words, positive words, words that will build up and not words that tear down. But I need the help of the Holy Spirit to do that all the time, to make those good choices, and so do you. Hi everybody, wasn't that an amazing Bible story? You know, Psalms 100 says, to shout for joy all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness, come before Him with joyful singing. Now, why don't we just get up and get ready to joyfully sing to Him?
Wasn't that a wonderful worship time? Now let's sit back down and get ready to hear our Bible lesson. Hi, boys and girls. I'm so excited to be back with you again. Pastor D here with another story about our two awesome friends, Frankie the Lobster and Joey the Clam. You remember those guys, right? You've been hearing stories about them week after week, actually month after month about their adventures and some of the crazy schemes they, they cook up and some of the crazy situations they find themselves in. I have another story for you today, but I want to make sure first and foremost that you remember our memory verse for the month. It's James chapter 1, verse 22. Does anyone remember what it says? James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So everybody stand up right now with me. Come on, stand up and say this. James chapter 1, verse 22. Say James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That's right. It's so important. You can sit down now. It's so important that we know the word, but even more important that we are doers, that we actually apply or do what the Bible tells us to do. Isn't that great? Isn't that exciting? Well, I have a story today that starts out really bad, but finishes really good. Now, how many remember where it is that Frankie the Lobster and Joey the Clam go to junior high? You remember where that is? It's called the Jellyfish Junior High. And they were so excited to go to school one day, they made themselves uh, sandwiches and they made themselves seaweed for, sa that's their salad. They made seaweed and they put it on their sandwich and they had a fantastic sandwich with seaweed. <laughs> Sounds yucky to me. But anyway, they made their sandwiches and they got on the bus and they made their way to the Jellyfish Junior High. They were so excited to get to school today. Do you know why? Because in one of their classes, there was going to be a special announcement made. You know what that announcement was? There was gonna be four people from the junior high, or four fish, or four underwater critters, I don't know what they're called, but there was gonna be four of those selected out of everybody in the junior high to represent Jellyfish Junior High in the national, say national, everyone scream national, national spelling bee. And boy, they were, Frankie the Lobster, with his lobster claws, was so excited and Joey the clam, he kind of just sits there though. He's a clam. So he was excited, but he was kind of bouncing up and down as a clam. He was so excited to find out who are going to be the four that made it through to represent Jellyfish Junior High at the National Spelling Bee. Isn't that exciting? So anyway, they make their way to school. They, they go through homeroom and now they're in their English class and everybody is so excited waiting to hear the names called. The teacher gets up in front of the class and says, okay boys and girls, it's the moment of truth. It's the time where I'm gonna announce the four students that'll represent Jellyfish Junior High in our National Spelling Bee and here they are. First, we have Grace, one of the Mahi Mahi sisters. And everyone goes crazy, ah, ah, Grace made it. And so everyone calms down, calm down, we have three more to announce. And the teacher says, and number two is Frankie the Lobster. And they all go crazy. Frankie's got his claws going and, and, and Joey's, can't jump very high because he's a clam. But everybody's so excited that, that Frankie made it. And now, and Grace made it. So hold on, there's two more that need to make it. So the teacher says, here's, the, here's number three. Mercy Mahi Mahi. The other Mahi Mahi sister got selected. So the sisters were so excited, could you imagine? And now everybody's waiting. Who's gonna be the last one? Who's the next one? Who's the next one? Who's the next one? And the teacher says, I have the last one to announce for you. It's a little guy named Joey the Clam. And they go crazy. Everyone goes nuts in the classroom and they're so excited. And just 
can't wait to represent Jellyfish Junior High at the National Spelling Bee. So, next a week later, they had to prepare, they had a plan, they had to study their words, they had to learn how to spell everything under the planet, right? Or under the water, actually. And they figured out how to study and they studied all the words that they thought might be on the spelling bee and Frankie and Joey worked together and, and Grace and Mercy worked together and they kind of really worked out all the words that they thought they would have to spell and they were so excited and so happy. Can you imagine how exciting that was? So a week later they all hop on the bus and they travel underwater all the way through the different coastal streams all the way past where all the, the huge sea turtles used to, used to hang out and, and swim and have fun and they made their way all the way to Australia underwater. Do you believe it? That's where the National Spelling Bee, you, well, that's not even in our country. I know, they had it in Australia. That's why it was so exciting. So I want to fast forward the story now because they're all in the Spelling Bee. There's kids from all over America and they're going through all these different words and they're, they're making their way through and people are getting cut off and people are, are, are losing and so on and so forth. And some people are hanging in there and still getting the right words. So all of a sudden, at the end of the day, the only people left, you're not going to believe it, is Joey the Clam and Mercy Mahi Mahi. So... It was, they already knew that the Jellyfish Junior High was gonna win, but now which of the two kids were gonna take home the prize? So Mercy was spelling words like, uh, you know, you know, whatever, supercalifragilis, the expialidocious. She was spelling all kinds of crazy words and it was tremendous. She got every single one right. And so now Joey the Clam gets a word the next word for Joey the Clam is, yes, discombobulated, discombobulated. And Joey starts sweating. I didn't study that word. Discombobulated. This, so he, he pulls himself up on the chair. Because remember, he has no arms. He's got a long tongue. And he says, discombobulated. D. I S B O U B and the, the monitor said, no, I'm sorry, Joey, that's not correct. Mercy will win the national championship for the spelling bee. And the whole place goes crazy and all that. And so as they're all excited and they're all celebrating, Joey notices that Grace Mahi Mahi is laughing and telling her friends, can you believe he lost to my sister? Could you believe he couldn't spell that word correct, discombobulate it? He's a foolish person. And so he, saw, he saw that and he heard that and he was so upset the whole way home. He was crying and crying and crying and crying. Could you imagine how upset and hurt he felt that someone said bad words about him? That's why it's so important. We be careful what we say because there's life and there's death. There's blessing, we can bless people or we can curse people by what we say, right boys and girls? So we have to be careful that we're watching what we're saying with our mouths. So guess what happens? Next day in school, Frankie the Lobster and Joey the Clam get to school and they see the Mahi Mahi sisters and in front of the whole class, Joey gets up and says, I hate grace and I hate mercy. They're not nice. They're unkind and nobody should speak to them. And so that went on and everyone was like, oh, wow. And, and Frankie and Joey, Frankie was telling Joey, don't talk bad about people. And Joey said, I don't care. I hate them and I'll always hate them and I'm going to tell everybody to hate them. Well, Mercy and Grace are so upset when they go home. Those words hurt them so deeply and people in school were making fun of them and mocking them because Frankie and Joey were so popular and they mocked the Mahi Mahi sisters. 
So much so, think about this now. See what I'm gonna say to you. One night, the Mahi Mahi sisters were so upset with life and so disappointed and felt that nobody liked them that they tried to take sleeping pills and tried to commit suicide. <gasps> That's how much those bad words affected them. And they went to the hospital. They thank God they were okay. And word got back, back to Frankie and Joey. And Frankie said to Joey, I told you you shouldn't speak bad about people because good words bring life and bad words bring death to people and harmful thoughts to people. Look what you did, Joey. And Joey cried and wept and he asked God to forgive him. And he asked his mom if, if, they would, if, if his parents would drive Joey and Frankie to the hospital so he could speak to the Mahi Mahi sister. So they did. They drove there and Frankie and Joey Joey repented and said, I'm so sorry for the things that I said. I promise you, I won't say mean things about you. It was my fault. I was just really hurt by the things that you said. And the girls said, will you forgive us too, Joey? And Joey said, of course I will. And they prayed and they asked forgiveness of each other. The Lord forgave them and they forgave each other. They forgave each other. And they were happy and went back to the Jellyfish Junior High and everybody accepted the Mahi Mahi sisters again. So you see, boys and girls, what we say really does matter. And the things we say about people, even though sometimes they're not even true, we can make up false things about people, it can really hurt them and also make people look at them in a bad way. You don't ever want to do that, right? So let's be careful what we say with our mouths. Let's say good things about people and let's encourage people by saying how much we love them and care for them and never say negative, evil words to them again. Isn't that a great story, boys and girls? I knew you'd like that one, especially about going to Australia underwater. I'd like to do that someday too. Well, you're listening, right? And you're watching, but maybe you've said bad things at times. And you're like, how can I stop saying that? Well, let's ask Jesus to come into our hearts. Let's ask him to be Lord of our lives and help us with our tongue. Can we do that? So if you want to do that, pray that prayer with me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. And even sometimes when I said bad things about people, I'm sorry, Lord. Jesus, come in my heart, be Lord of my life, and help me always to use my words to bless people and not to hurt people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, boys and girls, that's all the time I have today. So happy to be with you. Till next time, we'll talk again about Joey and Frankie. The Build Children's Ministry would like to say congratulations to the children for completing the 2021-2022 school year. We are hosting an end-of-the-year picnic on Sunday, June 12th, after service at Sunrise Lake, 270 Mendham Road, Morristown, New Jersey, from 1230 to 3 p.m. We'll celebrate the accomplishments of all the children, especially our sixth graders, who will be graduating into Purpose Youth. There is a $15 per person charge to attend. The fee covers beach access, paddle boats, lunch, and the Wybit water attractions for kids seven and up. All payments are due by May 22nd. Please scan the QR code or pick up a postcard in the foyer to submit your payment electronically. If you prefer to pay in cash or by check, please see a Build Children's Ministry leader at the Build table in the foyer. Feel free to contact us at ALWCKids, that's with a Z, at gmail.com if you have any questions or concerns. See you at the lake. Calling all parents and kids. It's time to get excited because Kids Fest is back. Mark your calendar for Thursday, June 16th from 6.15 to 8.30 p.m. The theme for this year's Kids Fest is Born to Run, and all kids from 3 to 12 are welcome to attend. If you pre-register between May 1st and June 5th, you'll be entered to win some pretty cool prizes. Also, if you bring five or more friends with you, you will also be entered to win four tickets to DreamWorks. So put it on the calendar. You do not want to miss this event.
moment. Grab your friends and wear your sneakers because we're going to get ready to challenge your mind, your body, and your spirit. Kids Fest 2022, Born to Run. We'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. And, and listen, guess what? If you want to watch this over and over again, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or if you want to join the worship team or you just want to help out, call the number below. Catch you next time. Have a wonderful Sunday.